Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Town TV's Look Who's Next. Of course, you guys know I'm your hostess with the most, Miss Simone Jackson, here to bring you guys another great episode of Look Who's Next, a podcast that has engaging conversation with influential guests in the entertainment industry. I am super excited to be introducing our next guest for today. Um, she has created a book that is I, I definitely see becoming a phenomenon in like the Twilight and, and Hunger Games sense. Um, it's been hailed as a fancy book that we have been waiting for, and I can definitely agree with that. Um, I'm definitely excited to be talking to the author of The Blade So Black. Um, everyone, please give a really warm welcome to L.L. McKinney. Hi, L.L. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Hunger Games and Twilight. Wow. <laughs> Hey, I'm not kidding. I, I, I was really blown away by this book. I, of course, just, you know, I've been a huge Alice in Wonderland fan for a minute. And of course, I've seen every different variation, different types of it. But this was the one type I could say, oh my gosh, this is like refreshing. This is new to me. This is something I see people around the world just going to fall head over heels for. So um, yes. So I definitely just definitely thought, okay, this is definitely going to be the next phenomenon. Hands down. I'm calling it. This is why I'm happy you're on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Of course. So we're going to shoot off the first question at you, Miss LL. I am super curious to know, and of course, the Black Town TV as well, where, when did this passion for your writing begin? Okay, so I have been telling stories since I was a wee thing. Um, my grandmother, God rest her soul, she used to uh, read books to me when I was little, and around age two, according to her and my mother, I started reading them back. Um, so I guess I've been reading since like age two or three. I don't remember that. So I'm just gonna go with what they say. Uh, but I would like create these little picture books where I would draw, um, even if I didn't know the words, like if there's a bird in my story, here's a bird. I mean, it kind of looks like a circle with two little squiggly lines coming out from feet, but it was a bird to me, you know? Um, <laughs> So I've been telling stories for forever and I really got heavily into reading as a kid. It was a way for me to escape um, just, you know, things that went on in life. Um, and I decided, I was like, I want to do this. How do you do this? How do you create these books? How do you affect someone's life like this? Like make them fall in love with these characters. Mm -hmm. And also, as a kid, like, I didn't really have the, uh, the vocabulary to articulate, okay, so I love these stories, but where are the Black kids at, you know? Exactly. So um, that's why I, I that, that's one of the things that drives um, my passion today. Um, even if I didn't recognize it when I was making my little stories, um, because when I first started out writing, because all the stories I read were about white kids. The first three books I wrote were about white kids. Um, and then Alice shows up and she's like, no more of this, okay? So <laughs> that's, that's how I got into it. It was, it was um, from a lifetime love of reading and wanting to be on the other end of that. Yeah, and I totally get what you mean, and this is why A Blade So Black was, was such a huge jump up for me, because, you know, diversity, you know, is, is a little scarce in, in, in books and characters, so reading someone that I could definitely relate to that kind of looks like me was so, I just felt like a huge connection to the book, and it just made the book so much more exciting for me to read, um, Definitely. But um, like again, I said, your book is called A Blade So Black and it's making huge, huge waves. Um, can you tell the Black Town TV audience a little bit about the book? Okay, so the way that I have pitched the book since its concept is A Blade So Black essentially answers the question, what if Buffy fell down the rabbit hole instead of Alice? follow with well the answer is uh swords will shatter hearts will break heads will roll that's what happens mm -hmm. when uh buffy goes down the rabbit hole instead of alice so that's essentially what it is in a nutshell it's this world where i took alice in wonderland and i was like well what if it's not this this 
possible, you know, acid trip that this little girl had way back in 18, (laughs) whatever, whenever it was written. What if this is an actual real place? And, you know, what would that look like in a modern setting? Mm -hmm. Um, How would that affect the world as we know it? How would our world affect that world? You know, what, what rules would have to be in place for this to be a thing? Exactly. And so that's essentially what this book is. And it follows that story um, as closely as I dared to get it. There are a lot of changes mm-hmm. for um, those who love Alice in Wonderland as much as I love Alice in Wonderland. It's not exactly a retelling. I like to call it a reimagining because we get some familiar faces, but the storyline is completely flipped. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I definitely got the sense of that. But it was so exciting. The, you know, every page it felt just so alive to me. Um, even though I was reading um, on the computer, I felt so into the book. I really felt like I was flipping the pages and then just actually reading from the book. It just, it just, everything came out to me. It was just so alive. Um, you know, LL, when you hear people praise your book, what, what, what reaction do you have? My initial reaction, and I have to get better than this, is like, me? My words? Really? Like, are you talking (laughs) about the right? You know, because we're all our own worst critic, right? Like, we Mm -hmm. all look at our work, whatever it is, whether it's art or whether, you know, it's business or science, like what we help bring into this world, we're the ones who are going to look at it the hardest, right? And so... It, it me seeing this through the eyes of the creator, I have to get used to, you know, well, the books that I loved when I told that author that I loved it, I wasn't joking around. Like I meant that, you know, so I'm getting used to it and I feel humble mm-hmm. um, because I'm very blessed to be here. And I feel the sense of, I hope I did right by those little black children who are looking for themselves. And Mm -hmm. and so whenever somebody comes and they're like, I love this book, I saw myself, that was my mama, that was my grandma, that was my auntie, you know, um, with the adults in the book, I I just feel, I feel gratitude and I I feel humble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's good. And I'm glad that people are, are, like I said, I'm really glad people are reacting to this um, book in a very positive way, because I do see it becoming such a huge phenomenon. Uh, like I said, the, it, it's got rich, complex characters and stories. So I definitely see people, you know, just falling in love with it as I did. And I'm pretty sure everyone else is going to, too. Um, you know, but I'm very interested to know, because like I said before, early, uh, book diversity in books and characters is very scarce. So I'm very interested. What type of books were you interested when you were young that kind of made you want to create someone like Alice? Well, of course, I read Alice in Wonderland. Like, I read the classics. Um, I read J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, I read the Harry Potter books. <laughs> There's a series that I read. Uh, yeah, Harry Potter book. Uh, Gryffindor, by the way. Yes. Um, and it has nothing to do with <laughs> Harry. Uh, I'm just... That's how I wrote, like, you know, Gryffindor for life, that's me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I read those books, and um, I read read The Hunger Games, of course, you know, getting older. And I read a series of books, um, it's the Artemis Fowl series, and Mm -hmm. that was more middle grade. But those are the types of books that I read. Like, I read vampire books. I read Interview with the Vampire. I was that kid who was looking for, like, hidden passageways and monsters in the shadows. Like I was the one trying to peel back the veil. Like, you know, is, is there any truth to any of this? Like, I'm not thinking that Dracula's out there, you know, gnawing on people's necks, but I mean, <laughs> stories come from somewhere, right? right? So I was that kid looking for the magical in the mundane, like the everyday walk of life. And science fiction and fantasy were and still are my loves in literature, Mm -hmm. um, heavily influenced with urban fantasy. I love urban fantasy. I love magic in the city Um, because, you know, urban areas get such bad raps for Mm -hmm. certain aspects that aren't necessarily true. Um, And life happens here and magic happens here and these connections are made and these are people who deserve to have those adventures just as much 
as Katniss or Hermione or Harry or, you know, uh, whatever the little girl is in Cassie Clare's series, The mm-hmm. City of Glass. Mortal Instruments, that's what it's called. I read those too way, way back in the day. Um, back when there were only three. Now there's like 1,500. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> there are there's so many. But that, that, those are the books that I, I read. Those are the books that I love. And those are the books that I want to put out there, but I want to black them up first. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Every, you know, b- Black characters deserve just as much as, as the story, as to be the hero, to be the villain, to be the romance, to be whatever. Just like, like you said, just like any, just like the Hunger Games, Harry Potter, uh, the Mortal the moral Instruments, all of that. I, I so agree with you on that. There's definitely, we definitely deserve those types of stories and voices in these types of books. And, you know, I'm so glad, this is why I'm so glad A Blade So Black was made because it's putting a very refreshing voice in a, in, in, to some people, a familiar setting, but refreshing it up a bit and showing you something new. And that's why I definitely think people will definitely love for the book. But, you know, when people, when people finally get to read A Blade So Black, what do you hope they will take from the book? I hope that they will take away that, I mean, life is hard. And the struggle is real in very many aspects. Like Alice struggles not only with, you know, fighting these monsters, but she struggles with family. She struggles with loss. Uh, She's been through some heavy traumas. Uh, She struggles with things that affect the Black community because that's just, you know, that's how it is out here. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I want people to take away that, you know, even with all of this, she's still a holy human person. Yeah. And that not everybody reacts to trauma the exact same way. Like, um, Alice loses her father and decides she's going to go kill some monsters. Like, that, that's her reaction, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, she's going to go beat the crap out of stuff and, and stab these creatures. You know, that, that's how she works through that. Um, and I hope they take away, you know, the importance of being able to, you know, for a Black audience to see themselves in these roles, um, to see that you can be in this sort of story and it doesn't have to be about race issues. It doesn't have to be an issue book. It could just be those same fantastical stories that everybody else gets to have. You know, they just get to go off and go on adventures and do this. Why does every story that has to sit or blackness have to be about like civil rights and slavery and, you know, the fight and life very much is about the fight, but that's not everything that we are. So that's another thing that I hope that readers take away from it. And um, ultimately, I hope they take away... um, a good time, a fun read, like I'm able to maybe help somebody escape for a few hours, a few days, however long, you know, they're there with Alice through this, and um, just take away a little piece of the story that they can tuck into themselves and into them hearts, their hearts, the way that, you know, I still carry scenes and stories and characters from when I was like 9, 10, 11 with me, you know, that's what I hope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I and like I said, this is why I I, I totally connect with you and, and your book, because you said, you know, why can't black characters have, you know, Avengers 2 without being about the struggle, without being about the fight, without, you know, slavery or civil movement? You know, I, I completely agree with that. There is so much more. We are complex, layered human beings, and there's so much more to us than the stereotype that, you know, everything else tries to force us to believe so this is why I definitely had such a great connection you know with the blade so back and my next question definitely for you LL is like as I said before um diversity in characters reputation is very scarce when you when we see someone like us you know in books so why was it so important to create someone like Alice in a blade so black so <clears throat> it's it's for me it's it's on a personal as well as like an industry high level um so i'll start with the personal like i said earlier reading these books i didn't see anybody who looked like me um or my family or you know th- there was nobody black 
Um, and when they turned up, they were like somebody had rubber stamped a stereotype onto the page and that was good enough, you know? So um, I started writing this book right when, a little bit after I found out that uh, my sister was going to have our first niece. And at that point, um, I had many nephews. So I was not mm-hmm. new to the auntie game at all. <laughs> um, but I knew, knew, like, and I was raising, you know, my little blurbs, you know, I was raising them to, like, love Spider-Man and Batman and Superman. Like, this is for you too, baby. Here's, uh, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek. And, like, my babies can name more characters than most adults walking around and I'm very proud of that <laughs> um and so but you know seeing knowing that that's how she was going to come up because she was also being born to uh the sister who shares my geekery with me the most out of all of my sisters and I n- remembered growing up without those characters And I said, I'm going to be damned if it happens to her. So having written the books that I had written, like I said, they were all uh, white characters. Because, I mean, that's what I grew up reading. That's what I figured, you know, if you want to be published, that's what you write. That's just how I saw from somebody on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that it was much, much worse once you get inside. (laughs) Um, But so I set off to to write this wrong that it, you know, happened to me and other readers. And um, cause I mean, you know, we had a uh, Toni Morrison and Octavia Butler and amazing authors who are putting black people on the page, but it's, it's, there are so few of us writing these stories. Um, well, okay. Let me rephrase. We're, there's not few of us writing them, but there's so few of us being allowed to tell them on the platform that traditional publishing provides. Right. And getting involved in that, um, I wholly believe that stories shape the world and the perception of the world. Like, what is a lie, if not a story that somebody is told that just isn't true? So st- stories are told all the time about gangbangers and thugs and their lies, because that's not the majority of our community. And even with those people, like we got to see in Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give with Khalil, whatever people thought that he did, he was so much more, you know? And these stories allow for not only us to see ourselves, to be represented and to have that, whew, there I am feeling, but it allows for other people who don't necessarily um, have that insight to pick up a book and look through a window into somebody's life. Like stories provide empathy um, and empathy is what people need to be able to be like, I understand you. I, I feel what you're feeling. I'm picking up what you're putting down. We can do this together without empathy. That doesn't happen. Exactly. And so like, that's how stereotypes get started. Like some dude, some scientists way back when decided, you know, this is what black people are like because this, this is what uh, indigenous people are like because this, you know, like he just, and this is what white people are like because this, he, like he, he just made stuff up and it became canon. It was just a bad story. And I feel that stories are a way to sort of neglect, not negate that. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. It was uh, N.K. Jemison who presented, and I'll be up to be double I'm really long with it when it comes to diversity, man. Um, A.K. Jemison, she said that a lot of people believe that the reason that Earth gets cold and hot and we have seasons is because of the shape of the rotation around the sun. During winter, we're farther away. During summer, we're closer. And that's because of science fiction. And millions of people believe that because it popped up in stories. So people believe what they read, what they see on the news. It's, it's all stories. And so that, that's why I think it's important to have these characters um, visible on covers and present and real and fully developed because we're owed stories. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with you on that. And, you know, definitely 
definitely agree with the fact that short stories does help shape people's perceptions. It helps, you know, shape, help shape, you know, our way as a society. Because like you said, if someone sees in a story, you know, news, however, it's a story and they'll see it and they'll believe it. So I definitely agree with you. And this is why it's so important to have characters like Alice to represent a different side and uh, one that is, I like to think is not as much as shown um, because here we have a character who is fearless, but she also has heart. She also has smarts and, 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 you know, she's got an edginess to her and it's just all a complete total package. And so this is, so I definitely agree why creating a, a rich, fully developed character is definitely important. Um, Miss LL, I am very interested to know, and of course, Black Black Town TV audience is interested to know too, uh, what other projects are you involved with that you can just give a little dish about to us? (laughs) Well, um, it was just announced that I'm going to be part of an anthology um, called Color Outside the Lines, and it focuses on interracial relationships. Um, and my story, without giving away too much, of course, is about um, a black girl who's a superhero and her girlfriend, who's a white girl whose father is a cop. And uh, this black girl has been using her um, superhero persona in town to help protect protesters during demonstrations because of some stuff that's cropped up in the neighborhood. Um, and so it sort of puts her at odds with her girlfriend's father. And so the story uh, builds from that and there's tension and there's love and, you know, um, I don't want to give it all away, but that, that's, one, that's one of the upcoming projects that I'm part of. Um, there are other things that haven't been announced. So I'm not entirely sure what I can and can't say. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Hey, we don't want you to get here on trouble here on Black Talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I will say um, that book two uh, for A Blade So Black in the A Blade So Black series is um, currently in development. So that's Yay! something that I'm working on is the next step in Alice's journey. So Look for announcements for that, cover reveal, title reveal, all that should be coming up in the next uh, two, three months here. So I am excited. <laughs> I am very, very <laughs> excited. Like I said, it took me less than like, I want to say it probably took me less than 48 hours to finish A Blade So Black. Like I was reading it during my lunch break at work. I read it when I got home from work. I was reading it while I was waiting to go to work. So I just finished it up and less been two days so I'm excited for the next book and I'm sorry for this uh, other project that you'll, you'll be involved with we'll definitely make sure we'll check that out um but can you quickly tell us um where can the Black Talent TV family go to follow you and your work um well I am very active on Twitter um and that's where I'm active the most like I'm everywhere on you know all social media platforms but Twitter is where I rage about, you know, the patriarchy and blah, blah, blah. That, that's where I get down. It's also where I geek out about, like, Black Panther and Sailor Moon, and I talk about my books. Um, and my at is L, like the magazine, so it's E-L-L-E on words. That's L on words. And um, if you just go to llmckinney.com in the upper uh, right-hand corner, You'll see all of the icons for all of my social media, my Facebook, my Instagram. I'm getting better at Instagram. I'm not on Snapchat yet. I'm kind of like almost an old, I guess. Snapchat just confuses me, but it probably is because I only ever see it when it's on my sister's phone. I'm sure if I got my hands on it, I'd figure it out pretty quickly, but I'm, I'm not on Snapchat, unfortunately. Who knows? Maybe that'll change in the future. Um, but Instagram, Tumblr... Facebook, Twitter, mostly Twitter. Um, but yeah, that's um, pretty much everywhere. And all that can be found on my website, upper right-hand corner. Wonderful. So I definitely encourage the Black Talent Team family to definitely check her out. Go on her website, follow her on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, whatever social media platform she's on, make sure you definitely follow her and keep up with the up-to-dates for A Blade So Black because, again, this is it's this is going to be a definitely huge phenomenon, so you definitely want to make sure you keep up-to-dates when the second one's coming out. Um, but my final two questions for you today here, Miss LL, I'm just curious to know, what goals do you hope to reach with your, with your series, A Blade So Black? 
I'm hoping that this story finds its hands, its way to the hands. I jumped like four or five words in that sentence. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping that it finds its way to the hands of readers who need it, uh, readers who want it. Um, I primarily wrote it for, like I said, for Black kids, but it's not just Black kids who need to read about Black kids. Like, everybody needs to read about Black kids. Everybody needs to read about everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that it reaches the kids that it needs to. I'm hoping it reaches uh, the adults who are kids at heart that it needs to. Um, and if I'm just, you know, be putting it out there for the universe to hear, hello, Jesus, hear my prayers. Um, <laughs> I would love to be on the New York Times bestseller list for many, many weeks. Um, listen, everything cross um, from my lips to Jesus' ears. Let it happen, Lord. Um, Let it happen. And I would also love to see it in other mediums. I would love to see it, you know, movie, TV show. I've always really wanted to see it as an anime just because I love anime and I think it lends itself very well to anime. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that's what I would love to see. And I would love to, you know, finish out the series, uh, possibly have a spinoff series. I would love to play in this world for a good long time. I would love it if the book actually became an animated series. I think you're right. I think that would be absolutely wonderful. And I think it'd be so different in the anime, you know, genre. And I think that would definitely, because, you know, from what I can think of, I don't think there is a, a, a leading African-American in a, a animation uh, cartoon. So I would love to see that, especially Alice, because she's so badass. So that she definitely deserves to be in anime <laughs> form. So I am definitely keeping my fingers crossed for that, because I think that'd be great. Definitely be great. Um, so I've got the final question for you, this there, Miss LL. Um, how did you come up with your title, A Blade So Black? Okay, so... This story has changed titles, I think, like four times. Uh, the, when I first started conceiving of it, I called it The Veil, just so I could have something, you know, to save the document under. Um, then I called it Dreamwalker, because that's what she is. And then I was like, well, no. And then I started thinking about, you know, well, I need to make the title something catchy, but it also needs to be able to match the other titles and, you know, when the series gets picked up. And here I am thinking about these things. Book isn't even, like, nobody that is, it's not going anywhere. I'm still writing it, thinking about how titles are going to look next to each other on the show. Um, so at one point, I called it Black as Fear because, you know, it, it, that was a big part of the story. And so after it sold, uh, my editor was like, like the title, don't love it, let's come up with something else. And so they, um, and I was like all the way down because you, titles are very fluid. Like most people um, may not even title something because it might not be that by the time it reaches sales. Um, some people just call it, you know, magic book. Um, I run around now calling the books that I'm working on by the character's first name. So my editor, she was like, let's brainstorm. I'll come up with some titles. I'll ask the marketing team to come up with some titles. You come up with some titles. She had no idea what was happening when she asked this. She was going to get like 900 emails, <laughs> like 50 titles each. Um, that's what happened. And so we wound up with The Blade So Black because it's, um, it's uh, part of the, the Jabberwocky poem mm -hmm. um, from the 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 uh the original story and the sword itself plays such a huge role in the book um and so when she said that I was like yes that is it that is beautiful <laughs> so because I wanted to keep um darkness in the title mm. or fear in some way in the title um and that was like my only caveat that was the only thing I was like if somehow if we can make it like ominous or dark or talk about darkness or I don't know. Um, and so that, that's, it was a group effort. Um, and I'm very thankful that my uh, editor, uh, Rhoda, I love you. Um, 
was very patient as I sent email after email after email with, with titles. Um, I don't know if they'll ever ask me for my opinion on titles again, because that was, that was a lot. Oh man, I was, I would send an email and then five minutes later be like, here's eight more. So here's eight well, more. Yeah, that's what the title came from. Eight well, more and then eight more on top of that. I was, man, it was a lot. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you guys settled on the blade so black because it definitely fits the book. It is, it's edgy, but it's, 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 it's eye-catching at, at the same time. So I'm glad that that was the title that was chosen. Um, but like I said, I, I'm a huge fan of the book, and I definitely see it becoming a huge phenomenon. And I I really appreciate you um, talking with me today, LL, about the book and everything. I'm so excited to be able to um, introduce you and the book to the Black Talent TV family, because I think as soon as they hear this, they're definitely going to go and get that book and definitely become just as obsessed with it as I am. Well, thank you so much for uh, your kind words about the story. Thank you and for having me here. I uh, love talking about books and writing. Um, a little bit less about talking about myself. But again, like I said, I'm getting over that. Um, so yeah, just, just thanks for, for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. I enjoy talking with you. Uh, we definitely have a lot in common. I, I'm also a huge Sailor Moon fan. So um, yeah, we definitely have a lot in common. So I, 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 I definitely felt, uh, <laughs> yes, oh yes, I am, I am a nerd. I am proud of it. I have no shame of it. So, but uh, yeah. Yes, I yes. yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, like I said, I know the Black Talent TV audience is just going to absolutely adore you, absolutely adore the series. Um, again, everyone, I encourage you to make sure you guys follow L.L. McKinney on her website, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, whatever social media platform she's on. Definitely make sure you follow. Keep up to date with her work and when the next series of Blades of Black will be. And keep up to date about whether or not, hopefully, knock on wood, that the show that the book will become a show and we will see it on anime, anime soon. So that will be definitely great. Um, but I definitely want to thank you again, Ms. L.L., for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Of course, you guys know I am your hostess with the most, Ms. Simone Jackson. Always here to guys, always here to bring you guys another great episode of Look Who's Next. Um, and you guys know that if you guys want to advertise or interview with us, make sure you guys hit us up at info at blacktownTV.com. We're always happy to hear from you guys and always willing to respond back to any requests who wants to be on the show. But until then, this has been another great episode of Look Who's Next. Again, one more time, I am Simone Jackson. I want to thank our guest for today, Ms. L.L. McKinney. Make sure you guys definitely check out A Blade So Black. It's a great book. And like I said, it's, 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 it's groundbreaking. It's, it's a huge phenomenon. And I cannot wait to see where else it's definitely going to go in the future. Um, so I definitely want to thank our guests one more time. I want to thank everyone for listening in. Until then, everyone, until another great episode of Look Who's Next, bye-bye. <laughs>